Shanghai had an ongoing sex blackmail ring for nearly 20 years. Chinese officials covered it up because they were in on it. And now, Chinese censorship won't let anyone talk about it. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect yourself whenever you go online. Shanghai, China's most developed and flourishing metropolis. Unfortunately, this is only the surface. Underneath the shining skyline the Communist Party wants you to see, it can be very dark and gritty. This is the case of the so-called Little Red Mansion, a six-story building located in Shanghai's Yangpu district. I know it doesn't look like much of a mansion, and it gets worse from here. As reports describe it, the Little Red Mansion is a place where a small tailor flourished and dozens of women's nightmares began. The tailor's name is Zhao Fu Qiang. Zhao came from a small county in Jiangsu province. In 2000, he moved to Shanghai to fulfill his China dream, becoming a tailor and a pimp. A very abusive pimp. In Shanghai, he opened two hair salons. Except they weren't really hair salons, they were fronts for prostitution, which is common in China. You get your hair cut, then a blow dry, then you should leave. Taylor turned pimp Jiao Fuqiang recruited young girls through his wife, who worked as a dance instructor in the area. Zhao would trick women into his brothels for supposed job interviews. Then he would force the women into sex slavery. How did he do it? By having the women raped, beaten, and then threatening to send nude photos of them to their families. But Zhao wasn't just your run-of-the-mill violent pimp. He was an entrepreneurial violent pimp. He also forcibly harvested their eggs and sold them on the black market leaving at least one woman infertile due to botched procedures. It was a morally depraved but lucrative business. Zhao was making boatloads of money and started expanding his empire. He eventually monopolized more than 1,300 shops in Shanghai and sublet them. And over the course of two decades, Zhao made around 1 billion yuan. That's over $150 million. By 2014, Zhao had rented the high-end six-story building which came to be known as the Little Red Mansion. China Business Journal gave us an in-depth look at what the Little Red Mansion looked like on the inside. On this episode of House Hunters International, fancy or just garish, you be the judge. But uh, what's with the bunk beds? Worst slumber party ever, especially for the women. Ugh. Now, Zhao's Little Red Mansion just so happened to be located next to the local government office. You might think, how did Zhao not get caught by the authorities? Well, it's because the authorities were his best customers. Senior officials even got a special membership pass. Notably, Lu Yen, a local party official who was the secretary of the Yangpu District Political and Legal Committee, and Ren Yongfei, president of the People's Court of Yangpu District were the uh, protective umbrellas for Zhao Fu Qiang. Zhao would invite government officials of all levels to be customers at the Little Red Mansion, and he would video them with prostitutes to use as blackmail. Pro tip for all you Chinese government officials watching China Uncensored, if someone offers you prostitutes at a place they own at a price too good to be true, don't do it. So blackmail might explain why, when the women Zhao victimized would go to the police, the police told them to go home. So Zhao Fuqiang was living the China dream. Start a small business, make tons of money, and don't worry about all the people you abuse on your way up. But eventually, the tide turned against Zhao. More after the break. Welcome back. One of the victims of the Little Red Mansion was a woman who's going by the pseudonym Chen Qian. She had just returned to China from studying in the U.S. when Zhao Fuqiang recruited her. 
Zhao had offered Chen a job as an operations specialist with a high salary. She soon learned that wasn't really the job. Reports mention how in 2017, Zhao let Chen out to make trips to the bank. That's when she would try to report Zhao to the police. In response, police would ask Chen, don't you and Zhao Fuqiang have a good relationship though? Which is another way of saying, don't ruin it for everyone else. It was not until 2019 that a report letter issued by a dance teacher who was also imprisoned was discovered by the anti-triad and evil supervisory team dispatched by the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China to Shanghai. At the time, the CCP was actively cracking down on gangsters and Zhao Fuqiang's horrific and evil deeds were able to be uncovered. So why on earth did it take until 2019 for central authorities to finally realize what was going on? Well, it didn't. A lot of people knew about it, but the local authorities were protecting Zhao. Remember, Zhao took blackmail videos of them. But this took place in Shanghai. Shanghai has long been a stronghold for the faction tied to former Chinese leader and power toad Jiang Zemin. And Xi Jinping is in an ongoing political power struggle with Jiang. So it makes sense that as Xi Jinping gains more and more power, he's using it to target his political enemies, party officials in Shanghai tied to Jiang Zemin. And while you won't read about it in state-run media, my guess is that the takedown of Zhao and all those officials he had blackmailed is connected to Xi Jinping using his so-called anti-corruption campaign to target Jiang Zemin's people. And in this campaign, Zhao Fuqiang was arrested. I can't really explain the hood, though. In September 2020, a Shanghai court sentenced Zhao to death with a two-year suspension. That usually gets commuted to life in prison. And more than 10 local officials and state-owned enterprise personnel, including Wu Yen and Ren Yongfei, were sentenced to between 1 and 17 years for bribery and other crimes. And then, earlier this month, the topic started coming up again, becoming one of the top trending searches on Chinese social media platform Weibo. The topic nearly reached 600 million hits within 15 minutes on Weibo, and that's when Chinese censors blocked it. That was after China Business Journal published all of the photos of what the little red mansion looked like on the inside. Then their story was taken down. And other media were diving into the story too. Those articles and reports were also wiped. I mean, it's one thing for central authorities to take down a massive sex and blackmail ring as part of a political power struggle, but it's totally unacceptable if the public talks about it. No matter how corrupt things are in China and no matter how much the current leadership vows to crack down on it, they're still going to control what can be discussed in the public and they wouldn't want you imagining that Zhao Fuqiang's prostitution ring was just a drop in the bucket among all the terrible things happening across China. It would hurt the feelings of the Chinese people, like these guys. And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark, because if you're tired of being under constant surveillance, at least you can hide your internet activity with a VPN like Surfshark. Surfshark has uncrackable encryption and the most secure VPN protocols, with IP and DNS leak protection, the government can't tell where you're really connecting from, and neither can your internet service provider. And Surfshark also protects you by not keeping logs of what you do online. That's why using a VPN like Surfshark is a key part of protecting yourself whenever you go on the internet. So use Surfshark. And with just one account, you can connect as many devices as you want. So try it out. Surfshark also has a special holiday season deal going on right now. It includes 83% off a two-year plan, plus four extra months for free. Go to surfshark.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored to get their deal that includes four extra months for free. Use the link in the description below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.